Now we switch gears to distributed filter structures and the simplest distributed filter structures I can think of are just transmission line stubs which you've now encountered several times in your undergraduate career. Let me show you the two canonical transmission line stubs that are used as filters. One is an open circuited stub which is less than a quarter wavelength long. If it's less than a quarter wavelength long this impedance is going to appear to be capacitive when you look in this way which means you can model it kind of as a capacitor. Now the responses of these two things is not exactly the same. It's low pass in either case but the response of this capacitor is slightly different from the frequency response of this particular stub. So even though they have both low pass response the particular detail of how fast for example they roll off is a little bit different. But in the same vein, I can model this also as being a series inductance. So if I'm interested in an application that requires either a low pass parallel capacitance or a low pass series inductance, I can synthesize a filter consisting of an open circuited stub, which is less than a quarter wavelength long. It will be something I can use in place of these things, which might be too difficult to implement whatever frequency I'm interested in. Similarly, I can use a short-circuited stub that has a length less than quarter wavelength. In that case, that input impedance appears to be inductive, which means it looks like an inductance across the terminals, which also looks a lot like a capacitor in series. So all the same comments I made up here apply down here. If I find myself in a situation where I want either one of these things, and I can't realize for some reason those values because perhaps it's too high a frequency, I can achieve a similar kind of response by replacing it with a short-circuited stub which is less than a quarter wavelength. So there's the basic idea. I can also achieve band pass and band stop responses using the exact same idea. All that changes is that these transmission line structures become a quarter wavelength. Now you will recall that a quarter wavelength transmission line is an impedance inverter. So we can model this type of structure which has a resonance or this type of structure which has a resonance both of which have bandpass response as being like this. All right? Because what will happen is for example this stub is short circuited. So it appears to be open circuited at whatever frequency corresponds to lambda by 4. So this looks like a bandpass because this will be open circuited at the at the design frequency and it will have some gr uh, smaller impedance at other frequencies so the response looks like this. Whereas this particular structure here is going to be short circuited at resonance at the frequency at which this is lambda by 4. So this will have zero response and it will become higher and higher impedance as we get away from that frequency so we get this kind of effect. So this is a band stop. And we can use this to replace responses that we'd normally be getting using these kinds of LC topologies. Let me show you a quick example of how you can design a practical distributed transmission line filter using these ideas. Uh, people often have the impression that this is a very complicated thing to do. Uh, and you can make it as complicated as you want. But there's also some very simple ways to get the filter response you want. So here's a filter consisting of three short-circuited stubs, lambda by 4, lambda by 4, lambda by 4, in each case short-circuited. Now any one of these would give me a bandpass response, as I just pointed out. If I combine three of them in parallel, we would expect that I would get a very narrow bandpass response, because these three responses would just kind of combine to give me a, a narrow response. That's not necessarily what I want. Usually I want some kind of flat region to define a passband. And the way I do that is by introducing quarter wave stubs in between these stubs which are giving me the bandpass response. Now the reason this works is a little bit subtle and it takes a little work to see it. It's explained in the book so I'm not going to explain it here. Just suffice it to say that these quarter wave sections have the effect of creating a flat bandpass in this case. Whereas the number of these stubs are the things which are giving me the selectivity. So in this particular case, I've chosen 1.1 gigahertz as the center frequency. So that specifies how long each one of these stubs is because these are all lambda by four. And then when I look at the resulting TPG, it looks like this. So here's 1.1 gigahertz. That's the design frequency. And we see that we in fact get a nice flat bandpass 
and that it rolls off as you'd expect. Now that's all I'm going to say about designing these kinds of filters. I just want to impress you with the idea that this is not necessarily complicated. To get particular kinds of responses, it takes a little bit more work uh, to figure out exactly what the stub links are and how they're related. But the general idea holds. And in fact, you can introduce variations in this bandpass response just using properties that you already know about these stubs.